How Thank excited you. were you to, because I heard you read the book first, how, how excited were you when you got the screenplay from Allison and knew that you were being considered to direct the play? I was really excited actually because it was my first opportunity to develop, a, to, to direct a film for the cinema. And, um, and I loved the novel Brick Lane and there was so much in it that I wanted to tell. So it was daunting because it was a well-loved novel and I knew it was a big and hard project to make, but mm -hmm. it was sort of also irresistible. Okay, okay. And a 500 page novel to break it down to a feature film, like how, how did you overcome that task? Like, how, yeah. how did you say, okay, I could cut this out and I, you know. Well, I think what we decided was that we had to capture the spirit of the novel and that we were going to distill these 500 pages that spanned three decades into something that was 90 minutes, but we wanted to make sure that we got the essence of it. So I hope what we're left with is what drew us to the story, which is really Nazneen, the story of the heroine, her mm -hmm. journey towards independence, her changing and blossoming view of the world around her, mm -hmm. set in the, the landscape of this marriage. Mm -hmm. It was still on the mat. You must have been busy. You think she's enjoying married life? My cousin says she has left her husband. He has seen her working the hotels. It is where all the floating girls go. I think she lived off cooking all these years. All these years, all these letters, hearing what your sister had to say. Give me my letter. Maybe I should have been asking what you are writing to her. Give, me. give it to me, I said, give! Give me my letter, give, give! You are no different from your sister! Like from from the novel, I, I know you said you had to to focus on on Nazneen's journey. But if it, if there was say another forty pages, you could have put in a screenplay and you could extend it. What what was the hardest thing for you to cut out of the novel part to adapt for the for the screen? I have to say there were so many things that I was sad to lose when we went from page to screen. Although I think we made a lot of the right choices, but there was in the in the novel there's the whole story of the sister and her letters, which is kind of fascinating. You follow her life in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and we just use that as touchstones to Nazneen in a very sort of subtle way. And there's also a lot of story subplots with the other characters who are wonderful and sort of Dickensian and amazing, but we couldn't fit everybody in, and we wanted to tell Nazneen's emotional journey. So we we made some tough choices, but I hope we made the right ones. My sister, she ran off with one of the men who worked for my father. He never forgave her. They stole his bicycle. <laughs> my boy. He was my first. I found him in his cot. He stopped breathing. We don't talk about it anymore. He's beautiful. Yes. The devil only takes beautiful babies. What? Why do you like me? Who says I like you? Um, one question I wanted to ask you is uh, about the associate directors. I know that, mm. that you had culture differences and everything else. How, how was it working with these different directors and 
Yeah. Well, I knew that as an outsider to that community, um, the Bangladeshi East London community, I needed to work really closely with people who understood that culture and were from it. And the good thing about making a film is it's a collaboration, you know. I mean, I was there, but I worked very, very closely with them, and they filled out all the details of that world. And so I worked with Rahul Amin as an associate director in, Lo in London, and he was alongside me. He's East London-based Muslim Bangladeshi filmmaker, and he'd talk about the details you know, from set design to the accent of the actors to the way they pray, all those details that make something come to life. He was right. kind of in charge of that. Okay. And then in India, when we shot in West Bengal, we had another associate director who knew that landscape and knew the Bangladeshi community over there very well. So again, she was informing that. Okay, great. So I guess my question is like this, this movie deals a lot with uh, with uh, Nazni, who, who kind of finds her voice and finds her home in, in East London, even though she thought, you know, that, that going back was going to be her thing. How, how do you feel about the whole story of, of women empowerment, I suppose? I mean, how, how do you think about that aspect of the story and how timely it may be in the light of what's going on here? You mm. know, in, in America? Yeah, well, in America. Yeah, here in America, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, it, the world is changing. And what's interesting about those immigrant communities is the men came over first with the, to have the jobs, and then the women followed with the children. And the women were often a lot younger, and they spent a lot more time with their children and learnt the language and saw the lives that their children were leading. So ironically, now they're the ones who are becoming more independent, who are getting taking in work and often running the families and are empowered by that journey. So I think there is a shift there and that this story does reflect that in many ways. Okay, well there must have been a lot of cultural sensitivity and maybe uh, maybe some naysayers to the movie that probably didn't want, want that message mm. to, to come out. How, how, how as a director were you like, I guess, culturally responsible? How did you, was it the associate directors? Or what helped you like, okay, you know, kind of like ride the fine line between, yeah. you know, society's norms and, and what the book, what the screenplay brought out. Yeah, well, at its heart, we knew that this was a uh, well-acclaimed and loved novel, and it was a fictional story. So it wasn't a representation of that community. It wasn't saying, look, every Bangladeshi woman's life is like this. And I think that we worked very, very closely with the community, and lots of people came on board to work with us, and lots of people understood that and believe in freedom of expression and believe that this story should be told and that hopefully many others will be told as well that reflect different aspects of life there. There were a few naysayers, um, really, really a tiny, if vocal, minority in the community who didn't want the book to be made but there were also many people who supported it so what we did was we took notice of them but we didn't change anything in the script we carried on making it and we talked to them and then finally when the film came out they appreciated that it was a, a decent human story that was just one story well thank you Sarah this being your first uh, okay <laughs> this being your your, your first uh, feature film and being such a great film I'm sure that we're going to see a lot more from you. And um, I just thank you for sharing this film with the world. Oh, well, I hope that it reaches as wide an audience as possible. I'm really grateful for that response. And I hope I get to make more films. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Joel.